I think the financial industry is not unique in this regard, but it's particularly guilty of trying to obfuscate things. I mean, uh, Wall Street is just you know, known for putting everything in these complicated acronyms and making everything far more complicated than perhaps it really needs to be. Mark Hulbert's my name. I live in Hillsboro, North Carolina. The meeting that my family and I attend is the Chapel Hill Friends Meeting in Chapel Hill, though I am officially a member of the Manhattan, Kansas meeting where I grew up. My uh, day job is uh, editor of a newsletter called the Holbert Financial Digest, and it's a, a service that keeps track of the performance of investment advisors. So it's like a consumer's report of the industry. Uh, it was sold to Market Watch, CBS Market Watch at the time, which is now part of Dow Jones, uh, a number of years ago. And so I now also am a senior columnist for their website. So as I got out of graduate school, I took a number of writing and research projects. And one of those was to write an article about some of these investment advisors who were speaking at a conference, all of whom got up and said how great they were and how much money you would have made if you'd only been smart enough to follow them. And you knew that they could not all be telling the truth because they were contradicting each other, but you couldn't also a priori tell which one of them was lying or if all of them were lying. And this was so offensive to my philosophical sensibilities and my religious sensibilities. Yeah, I grew up a Quaker, was born into it. My dad helped uh, start the meeting in 1955. He was a conscientious objector in World War II, and that's when he became exposed to Quakerism and became a Quaker. So uh, I was able to uh, grow up in that faith, and uh, a lot of it came through as, a, as osmosis rather than by convincement. Um, but uh, it's one of those things, I think, as you grow older, then you discover, oh, that's why I believe what I believe. Most advisors, in fact, the vast majority of them, do less well than they would if they just flipped a coin. Investment advice is so abstract, and uh, uh, so there's not anything you can put your hands on it. What other industry would there be able to survive if 90% of them weren't doing as well as you could by flipping a coin? It's an incredible industry. I remember, uh, trying to remember, the, the famous Quaker who once told me, but it's sort of the, the principle that the, the steam that blows the whistle is not the steam that blows the wheel or that turns the wheel, right? And uh, so much of the financial industries, m their expenses are marketing. It's out there telling the world how great they are. And since most of the time they're not that great, uh, it's, it's, it's in addition to lying, it's also that steam that's blowing the whistle rather than actually uh, doing their job. Um, early on, they, there were threats of lawsuit and uh, other kinds of threats that, you know, well, who in the world was I to, uh, to, uh, to say these things about their, uh, uh, about their track record? But it turns out that the truth is, is, is rather simple. Uh, customers, not just in the financial industry, but in general, are far more attracted to truth-telling. So if you were to say, you know what, I really made a mistake uh, and I haven't done all that well, but I'll do my best and uh, I'll, uh, I'll do it honestly and I'll uh, involve you in the decision making and we'll be partners in trying to, uh, you know, make it more possible that you can retire comfortably or whatever is your goal. People are attracted to that. In the end, things may not be all that complicated. There's a lot of simplicity here and it starts with the simplicity of the truth. Um, and just that simple notion is so powerful, it cuts through a heck of a lot.